G'day guys, Ali from West Spray. I'm going to show you how I strip a pump, in particular a Graco, and this one's an Ultramax 2495. So this will be, uh, sorry, this is how I strip them to test, to open them up and to see what's wrong with them. Um, so this is an Ultramax 2, this is the same as a 390, 395, 490 and a 595, there's no difference in the pumps. The only difference is that this older one has a pin that's holding the uh, piston in place, whereas uh, the the pro sprays have actually got a T slot on this on the um, on the piston which slides in. So tools that we'll need: we'll need a hammer, uh, an opening wrench, an 11 16 or a three quarter spanner, and a punch. And I'll show you the way that I do it. I always go from the bottom up. So first thing I do is I take off this lower nut. So I'm removing the pickup hose from the pump itself. <coughs> Okay, make sure I'm still in picture yet. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove uh, the lower inlet valve housing and while everything's still locked up, all I need to do is tap it out. Should get to the point that it's nice and loose. It's always good to make sure that your pump is in prime, not in spray so that there's no pressure held, held in there. Now this has got quite a bit of rubbish in there, I can see that's got some dry paint, uh, wet, still some wet paint in there. So it's going to have some form of blockage there. Next thing I do, now from here on in, the, the, um, the way I do it doesn't really matter because it's all going to uh, be more or less the same. So first I'm going to knock out the pin and all I do is just push it through and let, and let it drop and it's just sitting, sitting right here and I can push that out from the bottom and there's your pin there. I will look at the nut at the back here. That's in view. Oh, this one's already been removed. So there's a hose. Not just removed, it's completely removed. So there's a hose that goes from the back of the pump and that goes into your manifold filter. So that's usually an 11 16s or a three quarter um, uh, spanner. And then I go to the lock nut, which is this one here, and I just tap it out. Once I've got this loose, I can actually twist out the rest of the pump. Yeah, and this has still got some wet paint in there. So after it broke down, it was brought to us like this. Now what I want to do is I want to inspect the pump, because basically this is everything that I need to be looking at. Everything's in here. So I'll go back to my, uh, my wrench, loosen up the top packing retainer, and then with my piston, I'm just going to knock it out nice and gently. And from here, I pull out the piston. So there's my housing. In the, uh, that's my uh, pump out, my my valve housing or my piston housing. In there is the top packings. This is the piston rod. This is the lower piston valves, and the packings sit right here. And over here we have our inlet valve housing. Now I'm going to wash these down and bring them back to you clean, so you can have a look and see what's on the inside. All right. So I've cleaned the bulk of. Um, the paint out, off and out of the paint. Now you can see this piston rod here. It's actually damaged right here in the packings and you can see it from the way it's sucked up and you know, the shape. Now this shape tells me that it's uh, something from the outside that's damaged it. So these can get something that comes in behind the packings and damages them from the inside. But this I can tell just by the groove that it's on the upstroke something, so because this piston goes up and down in that formation. So something's gripped, usually a bit of dry paint that comes out of the filters, it's gripped and it's been slowly eating away at that packing. The piston itself appears to be in good condition, but there's two parts to a piston rod, it's not just the, uh, the main stem, there's also another section that sits under here. And I'm gonna remove this packing kit and show you what that looks like. I'll do that first and then we'll continue. All right, so I've got the top or the valve out. This is the what we call the in the outlet valve, and that's basically where the ball will sit against. Let me get this ball out if I can. It's stuck in there with some paint. But anyway, so I'm going to remove this packing. Ugh, easier said than done in this case. Slowly but surely we'll get there. I'm just looking at them to see which ones are actually damaged. 
So the, the packings in, in the Graco's will be plastic Teflon, uh, plastic leather, plastic leather. You can see that one's damaged. You can see the groove in there pretty clearly. And surprisingly, the leather ones have actually withheld relatively well. It's usually the leather ones that give in first. So there's another leather one. Take that off my finger. Take off the last Teflon. And this is actually stretched out and gone past where it's supposed to be sitting. Sorry, I'm out of view. And this one's really badly damaged. It's already in two pieces where I'm holding it. So you can see that that packing is gone. It's in two separate pieces. Now the other thing I'm looking at is the piston rod itself. This is not part of the piston rod, this is uh, the lower packing seat. And what I'm looking for, I can't get this off right now because I've got to go back to the vise, but what I'm looking for is any grooves or any uh, in pressure injections along here. If there are any injections along here or along this, the, um, the piston rod itself, the main part of the wrist, the piston rod, then this also needs to be replaced as well as the packing kits. And the reason why this section here is very important to pay attention to, a lot of people will only look at the piston uh, itself, the main rod, and not this section. The reason it's very important is pr this, this will be the le weakest point of the packing uh, of the piston rod and the packing will be able to be damaged from the inside out and when that happens there's no recovery they're going to go really quickly rather than from the outside in because they're still enveloped uh, with this housing they sort of last a little bit longer but when it's from the inside out they do not last at all so in this particular with this particular pump the piston rod appears to be very good it still needs a bit more cleaning to be able to know for sure the packings are definitely gone so they'll need replacing. This is just the, the valve for the for the piston. So in between there we'll have the packing kit, the lower packing kit. And then we look over here on the valve housing, the uh, the pump, main pump body. There, actually, there are actually correct names for these as Graco have labelled them, but you know, it's a matter of getting the brain to work and recall them. So what I'm going to look for along here where this, where this white o-ring is and this is um, a fail this is what's designed to be a fail point so if anything is going to get damaged this o-ring will break first which will stop any further damage to the pump and it, when this o-ring breaks uh, you will get a paint leak between these two points where it sits so that's a good indication that this o-ring is broken but we're not just looking for a broken o-ring we're looking for an injection around the actual housing itself and this one here has no injections or scoring and the o-ring itself is in good condition but the o-ring does come with a brand new packing kit anyway so we'd still remove this and replace it other than that the only other thing to look for is we put this up to light via this angle and we look for any internal scoring or pitting uh, I can't tell because I'm trying to look through the camera lens but I'll just look at it this way and this one looks okay so this pump here <coughs> that's in front of me would only need a packing kit and it will be up and running again it doesn't need anything else other than that and the packing kit like i said comprises of all the all the um the blue and the leather packings all the seats uh the two balls for the inlet and outlet that's what that one looks like there is one more thing to look for on the inlet valve housing which is the big one just grab my pick on the inside there is a seat which is what the ball will sit on i'll try and get it out this way yeah, that came up pretty quickly. When we inspect the seat, don't worry too much about the outside. We're looking for the inside. It's still a little bit wet, sorry. It's a little bit wet, so it's a bit hard to see. But we're looking along the inside rim, and we're looking for any pitting or any injection, injecting or injections. If there is any on one side, we turn it over because this is uh, reversible. We check the other side. If one of the two sides is good, we can reuse this. If not, then we have to replace it. And the last thing to look for is right down here. I've got to get a better camera, camera angle. Right down the bottom here, where this seat will sit, there should be a white Teflon seal, and this one's come out with the um, seat. So there should be a white Teflon seal. The Teflon seal needs to be intact and complete, and the metal around the base also needs to be in good condition. Otherwise, if it's injected or pitted, it'll leak as well. It won't allow the, the pump to hold the pressure. 
So that's what we look for when, we, when we're um, opening up these pumps. We're not just uh, willy-nilly saying change this or change that. Everything's checked first, clean, checked, and then we give you our recommendations. Um, a great cup pump like this is usually good for anything from five to 10,000 litres, depending on how um, it's used, what product is put through it, and what PSI. So just remember that, that's, that's the way to pull these apart. It's a little bit of a tedious video, I'm sure it's over 10 minutes already, but it's, it's also really good to know what your pump looks like on the inside. Um, regarding buying a kit and reassembling these yourselves, if you have the knowledge, by all means do it. If you don't, please don't, because you will only do further damage. At the moment, like the damage here is purely packing, but if you don't know what you're doing, you'll actually do other damage to the metal bits, and that's where the pumps become expensive to replace. Uh, Ali from Westbury, look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care.